It's been impressive run after impressive run, move after move for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And here we are post NFL draft, ready to talk about something we've talked about probably four or five times at this point during the off season, but something that just continues to get stronger and something that you got to feel better about with every single decision that Omar Khan, this front office and Mike Tomlin have done throughout this off season period. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers to go your daily to go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on youtube.com slash all Steelers talk and subscribe anywhere. You get your podcast today. We're talking about post NFL draft and how it brings the Pittsburgh Steelers even closer to something that we have talked about time and time again. And that is a Super Bowl. The Steelers enter their Super Bowl era. This is a Super Bowl window that is wide open for the Pittsburgh Steelers and something that, yeah, it was tossed out there. I've talked about it more than once and will continue to talk about it because I genuinely believe it and what the trend of the NFL, what the NFL has shown us over the last decade or two is exactly that. If the Pittsburgh Steelers are here, they have an opportunity. It's about making the most out of that opportunity, obviously. Not every team does it. Most teams don't. But that window is open. And Omar Khan stepping in here and saying, hey, look, it, I want to win a Super Bowl. It makes things so much better. And it makes those chances so much stronger. Because a lot of GMs, every GM, says, I want to win a Super Bowl. But not every GM is built to win a Super Bowl. Omar Khan appears to be. And what he did in the NFL draft, what he was able to do in the NFL draft, and how cool, calm, and collected he is, while Mike Tomlin continued to talk about how nervous he was, how fast he was speaking, how aggressive he was, to keep your head cool and to understand that these moves that I'm making are going to benefit us instead of just jumping the gun and making any move that comes our way because we're nervous or we need this or we need that, or being completely stalemate and saying, hey, look, we're not moving at all because we have to execute here, here, and here. Instead, he's sitting around going, I'm I'm confident. I know what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is going to work. And so far, it has. We could talk about the Steelers moving up in the NFL draft to go get Broderick Jones, and I think that was super impressive to only give up pick 120 and tell Bill Belichick, hey, look, it. you want to screw the New York Jets? Let me screw the New York Jets We'll do it together. That's a good move to make if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. And looking at the history between these two organizations, yeah, I get it. If the Steelers had the opportunity to screw the Baltimore Ravens, they're going to depend no matter who the team on the other side is, unless it's an AFC North team, but they'll make that move if it benefits both sides. And that's how the New England Patriots looked at it. But then to sit there at 32 and say, hey, look at Joey Porter Jr. is the best player available. We have to go with him. We can't miss out on this opportunity. Don't don't just get overwhelmed with the fact that every team in the fo- in the National Football League is calling and making offers about this pick. Don't be overwhelmed that there's still a first round quarterback on the board and that guys want to come get Will Levis. Don't get overwhelmed about it. Just make the best decision for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That decision was Joey Porter Jr. And I agree with it 1000%. Then to come back and get Keanu Benton, a guy that many believed was an option at 32 or even just a slight move back from 32 to get him at 49, in my opinion, is a little bit of a steal. A guy that could come in here and start at nose tackle and fill that Javon Hargrave role that the Pittsburgh Steelers have been searching high and low for for years now to solidify the defensive line. That's what the Pittsburgh Steelers did. They solidified their defensive line for the first time in a while They now have Cam Hayward, Larry Ogunjobi, and Keanu Benton, three starters that they could walk in here and feel comfortable with while DeMarvin Leal develops into year two. Isaiah Loudermilk hopefully takes a step forward. And then guys like Armand Watts and Braden Fehoko and Montrevious Adams all coming off the bench, all providing quality depth. I mean, this is the best defensive line the Steelers have had in probably four years. And then to make the ballsiest move in their draft class. And that is to sit there at pick 80 and say, you know what? We want Darnell Washington. 
He is the top name on our board, but he's fallen. And there's a reason that he's falling. And there's a reason that all 31 other teams don't really want this guy. His medicals are a concern, I guess. And they knew it. All other teams knew it. And the Steelers, well, you don't pick somebody in the back of the third round, even if you trade back for him, unless you understand that this guy is going to be healthy and totally fine and that you don't really have to take a major risk on him because with the third round pick, your expectations are this guy should be a contributor. This guy should turn into something impressive. You're not going to take that guy if you believe that his medicals are bad. And I'm sure that the Steelers have done it all and they feel good enough about where Darnell Washington is. So to slide back and say, hey, at pick 80, we're going to move to pick 93, which is 13 picks. That's half the NFL. And say, we believe our guy is still going to be there and we're going to get a fourth round pick because we're not done making splash in the NFL draft. And then land Darnell Washington. That was hands down the most impressive move of the three days that Omar Khan put a show on for all of us. To say, hey, look, at this is our dude. We're going to get our dude, no questions asked. And then to do it. That's a guy who understands what's happening in the NFL. That's a guy that listens better than most. And there were some knocks on Omar Khan when he was hired as the general manager. There were some concerns during the hiring process about whether or not this guy was going to be able to evaluate talent the way that a guy like Brandon Hunt would be able to or a way that a guy like Kevin Colbert has been able to. There were many, many critics out there, including myself to a degree. You know, I was a big Omar Khan fan. He was my guy for the general manager spot because of what he did and what I knew about him and his relationship in the building. But there were a lot of people talking about how this guy might not be able to build in the NFL draft. Well, what Omar Khan is really, really, really good at, maybe better than most, is listening and understanding what's happening and then making the most out of it. He gets it, and he's fine listening to all his scouts and all his coaches talk about who they want and what players are best on the board. He doesn't have to be the best evaluator of talent as long as he has the best evaluations of talent around him. And I think the Steelers have, well, a damn good scouting department and have for a long, long time. They have great coaches who work their butts off during the draft process to come out here and go to pro days and attend pre-draft visits and head to the NFL combine and build up their reports of who they believe the Steelers should go after. What Omar Khan does is sit back, listen, understand where the Steelers want to go in the NFL draft. And then he puts a plan together and he works constantly to see the best way that the Steelers could do that. And in the NFL draft, damn, he did it to perfection, to perfection, to get Darnell Washington moving back and then use that other draft pick to get Nick Herbig, who, by all accounts, I get that he's short and that there's worries there, but should be a great edge rusher slash off ball linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers fills two needs instead of one. And in the fourth round, I mean, that's exactly what you're looking for to regain that pick and then go Broderick Jones, Joey Porter Jr., Keanu Benton, Darnell Washington, and then top it off with Nick Herbig before you enter a long gap between now and the seventh the seventh round. That's as impressive as it gets. And then you finish it off with an offensive lineman that, you know, maybe he makes the team, maybe he doesn't, but he's got a lot of versatility and he's played at all five positions along the offensive line, and that's got to feel good for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Corey Trice is a big physical dude who, if he wasn't dealing with injuries left and right, he'd probably be a lot higher than the seventh round, standing 6'3", 210 pounds. Could play inside and outside, a little bit of safety. That's exactly what the Steelers have been looking for. And then it's all over. You sit back, you take it all in, you recap the draft, and you think, what's the biggest takeaway? What is is the most flashy thing we could talk about what is the biggest turning stone that the Pittsburgh Steelers made over a three-day period how much better did this team get I don't know how much better the team got in my opinion it got drastically better the Steelers have a franchise left tackle for the first time in my existence 
They have a franchise cornerback that they got in the second round who gets to learn behind Patrick Peterson and doesn't have the pressure to come in here and start in day one. That's incredibly valuable for both sides there. You went out and got a nose tackle who could play defensive tackle as well and adds depth and a starting position. Wow. Darnell Washington is the best thing you can do for this offense because not only does it help in the run game drastically, it makes Broderick Jones' life a lot easier. It adds a red zone threat, and it allows you to move Pat Fryermuth around and rely on Zach Gentry less. Connor Hayward could go play fullback or halfback or slot receiver or whatever and be that utility piece that they want him to be and not play tight end. And then you added a a guy who's 6'3", playing on the outside as a cornerback that you feel real good about, an edge rusher that you were very excited about when you needed an edge rusher. In my opinion, the Steelers got a ton better during this draft. But I think what stood out to me the most and what's going to stand out to me the most throughout this entire offseason, I think, until we get back into football and things start, action happens, and we start to see really how good the Steelers could be, it's that Omar Khan appears to be a Super Bowl winning general manager. He appears to have all the pieces and you know, the pieces, you know, we don't rave about Howie Roseman, even though he hasn't won a Super Bowl yet. You don't just sit there. Or I guess he has, excuse me. He has won Super Bowls, but you look at him and you say, that's a Super Bowl winning coach. He makes our GM. He makes Super Bowl winning GM moves. It feels a lot like what Omar Khan does. It feels a lot like the same action, the same understanding, the same ballsiness, the same aggression, but the smart aggression that you want in a general manager. Omar Khan is the next piece to the puzzle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they desperately needed one because Kevin Colbert, a great general manager, but an old school general manager, ran things much differently than the way the NFL operates today. You have a coach in Mike Tomlin who, like him or not, is one of the best coaches in the NFL. You have a quarterback who opens up your window, is a winner, and has the development that hopefully turns into what the Steelers want him to be, which is a franchise quarterback. You have a running back that's young and powerful, an offensive line that finally appears to be put together, a defense that was impressive last year and only seemingly got better this year, filled the holes that they needed to fill and replaced the names that they needed to replace, And now you have a general manager who's willing to do whatever it takes to put the finishing touches on a Super Bowl winning team. The Steelers take another step towards it. And that's got to feel real good for fans. And it's got to feel real, real good within the building to understand that they are taking full advantage of a window that they know is open. 